Hey everyone, Steve here from 11ish, a channel where we talk about lucrative investment strategies and opportunities based on the requests from the 11ish collective. All you need to do is hit that subscribe button and leave me a comment. Today we're going to talk about a request of an IPO that really excites me. Because the 11ish approach in investing looks at companies in a forward speculative way based on business value and product differentiation combined with good fundamentals. And if you've seen my past video, what I also value a lot is a product that drives change in society. Just to name a few in this category, I've talked about Peloton, Zoom, DocuSign, and now GoodRx. Even though in my opinion, they have one of the ugliest websites I've ever seen in my Fahim. life. And this is coming from a web developer who has been coding since I was in the third grade. GoodRx checks a lot of my boxes and I'm gonna share with you why. But of course, there's always risk. So we're gonna talk about that as well. If this is the type of content you've been looking for, please hit that like button and let's get started. To make a long story short, GoodRx helps you find affordable pharmaceutical drugs. This is a industry that is old as shit and they are trying to drive change. And the reason why I think they have a strong value prop I'd like to point out two pain points in this industry that I recognize needs change. The first pain point I wanna highlight is the supply and demand curve. Unlike most products where there is a lot of competition and so the supply and demand curve is kind of flat. For example, if you're trying to buy milk and the price is let's say $2 a gallon, now they're deciding to charge $20 a gallon, you can actually choose to you know, buy a substitute. You can buy water, you can buy orange juice. Those are legitimate substitutes. You can even perhaps buy calcium supplements, but that is not the case with drugs, right? A lot of times there's only one type of drug that you can use for yourself. That's what the doctor recommended, but then you have zero flexibility in terms of pricing. But because of the lack of competition and the absence of substitutes in many scenarios, you end up paying whatever the pharmaceutical companies tells you to pay, right? And even if there were substitutes, you as a consumer, it's very hard for you to have the transparency in terms of what the right price is because that information is not easily available. So you mix a steep supply and demand curve on top of a lack of transparency and you get potential for price gouging. You get a lot of consumers suffering and ending up paying a lot more. I am by no means an expert in this field and John Oliver has did a really great segment on this so I highly recommend you checking his out but I think it speaks volumes that you still read in the news about people going to Canada and Mexico to buy pharmaceutical drugs. Good RX, they're essentially trying to solve this problem. I think the LA Times article said it best. Good RX benefits from America's healthcare shortcomings by offering coupons aimed at providing users with reasonable prices for prescription drugs, something politicians have steadily failed to accomplish. Their business is very simple. It allows you to search for the pharmaceutical drugs that you need. And it shows you all of them that are near you and all of the pricings and the discounts that's available to you so that you can get it. And this way, it creates a price transparency. And it also provides you alternatives so that you can get the drug that you want at the price point that you're comfortable with, in the location that you're comfortable with. And this is super, super powerful because I think products like this is going to drive change. An open marketplace is the right step forward to create that transparency so that people could not overpay for the products that they need. And I believe this is what's gonna help drive that flatter supply and demand curve and help pharmaceuticals price their drugs more fairly, at least after their whole patent lockup period, right? I think this is the right direction. And their business model clearly works because they made almost $400 million last year. Another reason why I think their business makes sense is that it seems like they have a very strong leadership team. They're making very smart acquisitions so that they can create a holistic supply and management chain for the pharmacies that they work with. I think this is very smart and very strong for their business. I also think this is necessary because one of the concerns I have is the fact that Amazon is clearly trying to get into the pharmaceutical business as well. And I'm sure you realize that if you try to go against Amazon and anything Amazon has set their mind to do, you're going to be fighting an uphill battle. So that is my number one concern. My second concern is that I do not think their business model is that complicated. I think it's more about the partnerships and the credibility behind the product. Now, please keep in mind, I'm not 100% sure this is a valid concern, 
But when I saw this app and saw how it works, the first thing that came to my mind was Groupon. You know, when Groupon became known as a big deal, a shit ton of copycats showed up, right? And so my bigger concern is, you know, because they're going public, it's becoming more visible. I think it will inevitably create copycats. And that I think will be very challenging to go against because I think their product differentiation is not particularly strong. It's more about the connections, the network, and the availability of their products. They're basically leveraging existing services and creating connections and transparency. Again, that is great for us as a society, but I'm not really sure if that is strong enough as a business moat. I absolutely think that GoodRx has a really, really good pitch, really great market fit, and the right direction for the pharmaceutical industry. The biggest challenge is whether Amazon is a legitimate competitor or not. I actually do think that they can coexist, but I also think that GoodRx needs to start pivoting a little bit harder into an e-commerce delivery model. But that takes time. The pharmaceutical industry is a really old system that takes time to evolve. I can only assume, I have a feeling this is why GoodRx operates the way it does right now, coupon driven. But GoodRx is in a position to evolve and be the leader for this revolution. And this is why I think GoodRx is a good investment. Again, it is not without risks. And as always, if you're watching this company when it's just about to go IPO, I always recommend that you hold off, wait at least a month, if not after the first quarters, to see how things are. Then you'll get an idea of how the leadership operates publicly, how fast the company grows. Now, if you have an inside edge, for example, you actually use GoodRx yourself and you're seeing you know, the user experience improvement or them doing something that looks like it's tackling a new market, if you have that inside edge, then I think you should invest away because you're gonna have that edge that institutional investors won't. So this is what I have to say about GoodRx. I hope this makes sense. And if you have any questions or concerns or just general comments about the company, please leave me a note. If you have any additional requests, again, hit that subscribe button and then leave me a comment as well. Thanks for watching and I look forward to working with you next time.